They had their three young children taken away in 2004. Yeah. Um, they were accused of harming them, yeah. and it turned out actually they were exonerated, but by then it had gone so far down the line with the adoption, they couldn't get their children back. Is that right? No adoption order has ever been overturned in Britain. And when it was found that Mark and Nikki had done nothing, the child, in fact, had some uh, medical uh, disorder, um, it was too late. Now, I got... I opened a letter and it began... I could go to prison for writing to you because that's one of the bad things, mm -hmm. Janet. They're gagged and they're not allowed to speak. It said, I could go to prison for writing to you, but you are my last resort. And that was Nikki Webster. And after I talked to them, I knew they were innocent and, and they, they've since had two children who they've been allowed to keep because their case got into a higher court. Mm -hmm. If they get out of the family court, then they have a chance. But it's not the Webster story. I borrowed two things from their story. One is that letter, because mm. an agony aunt in the book gets that letter. Mm. And the second thing is, the thing that has impelled me to write this book, Nikki told me that when she last saw her little girl, who was five, she said, Mummy, have we been naughty? Is that why we can't come home? Aww. And to think that a child has to process in her mind, have I been naughty? That's wrong. So there's no way that an adoption, when a, when a child's forcibly adopted without the consent of the yeah. natural parents. There's no way of overturning that and no. in law and getting no. your child... Well, that no. plainly mm. seems... Although um, social workers and, and judges always say the child's interest must be paramount, but if that adoption was based, as they often are, on misdiagnosis at a mm. hospital and negligence by... Uh, a hospital, then it seems to me incredible that there's, a, mm. there's definitely a loophole in the law because the child's interests haven't been served. And it isn't fair to the adoptive parents because I... Another thing that influenced me was I sat on this morning's sofa with a girl who'd been taken, again, for unexplained injury, and as soon as she was old enough, she sought her mother out. Mm. And they sat there like two peas out of a pod and she was so overjoyed to be back with her mother. And all the time I'm thinking about the couple out there who yeah. for 15 years mm. had given love yeah. Yeah. and okay. spent money and energy thinking, we've got a child for life. Now, she loved them, she honoured them, she respected them, but she wanted to come back home. And it's only a child who's had bad experiences of home who, in my opinion, will flourish in adoption mm. and, and want to be there. Mm. Well, Denise, you said... Um, Nikki, in her letter, mm. said, you are my last resort and you didn't turn your back on them and I know how much help you gave them and um, they've sent a message for you today. I want you to have a look at this. Hello, Denise. Hi, Denise. I'd just like to say thank you. Without your help, we, don't, we truly, truly believe we wouldn't have two beautiful children sitting upstairs right now. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. I mean, obviously, the help you've given us has been invaluable and our hearts aren't fixed, but they're holding together. Thank you so much. Aww. The book is called Don't Cry Aloud. Um, it's always lovely to see you, Denise, and uh, thank you from all of us too. Thank you. Thank you. Denise Robertson. <laughs>